Today, we are going to go through 20 point and shoot digital cameras that I bought from a local pawn shop that was going out of business. They give me a bargain rate on these because I'm sure some of them are broken. I paid five bucks a camera, so $100 for 20 cameras. I didn't really go through these too closely because there's a couple that, if they work, should pay for the entire lot. So we'll go through these, test them, uh, see what sort of value they have in the used market. And if you're new here, hi, my name's Kevin. I've been buying and selling used digital cameras now for the last 10 to 15 years. And I'm pretty familiar with almost every point and shoot digital camera that was made, as well as ascertaining value, because I've sold almost every model. And because of that, I have a lot of batteries and chargers as well, which is important in testing digital cameras. I've got a few here as well as AA batteries, so we can get an idea of if the cameras actually work. And uh, let's get started. Camera number one. Draw from the top. Okay, we've got a Sony DSC W310. Uh, this is a compact point and shoot model, uh, 12 megapixels, probably released 12, 13 years ago by Sony. Uses the Sony NPBN1 battery. There is no battery inside. I believe I have one over here somewhere. Yep. Okay, so the camera did power on. A vertical line on the LCD. Now sometimes this line does not affect the actual uh, pictures taken with the camera. We'll have to take uh, put a memory card in there and take it out and put it in, in a computer to see if the line actually affects the, the pictures. Okay, well, unfortunately that line that's on the display does show up in the pictures taken. So unfortunately this camera doesn't have any value. Um, if you're very uh, resourceful you may be able to actually fix that. It's not something that's within my bandwidth so I'll go ahead and put that in a, a four parts pile uh, unfortunately. Not starting off with a with a good one. Okay number two little Nikon Coolpix 47 4600 uh, 4 megapixel camera, small little compact guy, sold a lot of these as well, AA powered, uses just a regular SD card, looks like there is a crack on the door, you can see that there, um, let's see how the battery compartment looks, battery compartment has a little bit of corrosion, and if there's just a little bit of corrosion you could use a little bit of vinegar or wire brush, that's what I commonly use. Some batteries in there and see if she powers on. The battery tray does close properly, which is good. A lot of the times that will be a problem if the battery door is chipped, like this one. Ooh, does power on. Nice. Lens moves in and out normally. And what I try to do is take a picture when I'm testing these and ensure that the flash works and everything else is working properly. Nice. Okay, so that camera just needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but it is in a decent working condition. Value on this camera is gonna be somewhere around $30. And a lot of times when I sell these, and I sell a lot of my cameras on eBay, I do try to include a small memory card because a lot of the current memory cards, their capacity sizes are too big and they won't actually work with older digital cameras like this. All right, number three, got a Nikon Coolpix 8 megapixel S210. And it looks to be in actually pretty decent shape. Do a little bit of cleaning, light cleaning real quick. Some gouge on the metal body there. Um, pretty common. And this uses Nikon's uh, ENL10 battery, which is that guy right there. Oh, buttons make noise, but display's not actually turning on. So the camera's on, the green light's on, but the display is not actually turning on. Really uncommon problem, actually. Well, that's unfortunate. Okay. So that one's gonna go in the parts section as well. So we're only one for three so far. Hopefully my, uh, my nominal $100 investment will end up paying off in the end. This one I knew was, I saw it at the top. I knew it was broken. 
Whenever you see a lens like that, it's super off kilter. There is an offhand chance that you could gently work it back into place, but uh, this thing has clearly been like that for quite a few years and is fully wedged in position. So that thing's gonna have a lens error if you were able to power it on. And I'm not even gonna try to power it on. It does have a battery. Put that in the parts pile as well. So one for four. Oh. All right, Canon Power Shot SX100. And this is one of the funnest parts of my job. It's a bit like a treasure hunt. Um, maybe it's the inner gambler in me. Camera power's on, that's good. I remember when Canon released this camera. Even out of the box, brand new, this thing has quite a bit of lens noise. Um, it's one of Canon's first budget, decent optical zoom cameras with utilizing AA batteries. There we go. Pop the flash. We'll see if this camera takes a picture. Nice. Okay, so fair amount of wear. Let's say this camera's in fair condition. And value on this camera on a website like eBay in the United States is going to be about $45 with AA batteries. Maybe a USB cable and a memory card. So, uh, decent value there. So there we go. 45 I thought it might be kind of fun to uh, go ahead and take one of the cameras that I bought and tested and is working out and uh, get some pictures taken. It's a bright sunny day in Arizona. The 8 megapixel uh, Canon PowerShot SX100. All right, we are three, five, two for five so far. And let's get into number six here. Ooh, Olympus FE340. And this is a fairly compact 5X optical zoom digital camera that uses actually the same battery as that Nikon. Uh, and the Olympus version is the Li42B. So let's grab one of those. It's just for testing purposes here. It is kind of nice for a brief period. Um, a lot of major manufacturers use the same battery style. So given that they're the same milliamp hours, they're all pretty much universally used. Camera power's on. Lens looks decent. Does this use XD cards? Yeah, this uses XD cards for memory, not regular SD. And that is a memory type that was only used by Olympus and Fuji for a fairly brief period. Um, those cards have actually gotten kind of spendy. Normally you're talking about, in some cases, almost the camera value of like 20 to $25, depending on the size of the card. It does take pictures. Picture looks good. Um, this camera's in, uh, in decent shape. So... Uh, value on Olympus FE 340, uh, if you were to pair it with a basic charger and without a memory card, you're looking at a value of about $35 to $40 on that. All right, Kodak EasyShare C813, and this is a fairly compact uh, digicam that is, what, 6 or 8 megapixels, I think? 8.2. If you've got a lot of corrosion in your AA battery tray, uh, I have a separate video on how to how to fix that. Um, and a lot of times it can be fixed. My success rate on fixing cameras, even with pretty heavy corrosion in them, is like 60, 70, 80%. So this one's not powering on. What I'm doing here is actually just gently nudging with my finger the metal post inside of the battery tray up a little bit because a lot of the times that's what's causing the problems is over time it just that spring mechanism kind of just buckles and wears down a little bit so the connection at the very top isn't very good resulting in a camera that won't power on so let's see if that did the trick there we go yeah it did so that was pretty easy um, lens looks good
see if it takes your picture real quick. Yep. Nice. So I've sold uh, this camera, I've sold dozens of this camera over the years. Uh, pretty reliable camera and actually cosmetically it's in pretty decent shape. So you're looking at a value here of about 40 bucks on the Kodak EasyShare C813. Okay, so we, with that camera, we're right around $150 for projected value. And although that may seem like I'm in the green, I'm not really because you got to factor in eBay costs or wherever you sell it at costs, shipping costs, um, and then obviously your time. So um, I would like to see a value of a couple hundred dollars if I could out of this just to make it worthwhile. And um, I think we might get there. Let's see. Ooh, let's go to this one. Canon PowerShot A610. Ooh, cosmetically really looks quite nice. So this is a AA powered uh, five megapixel digital camera. Canon released oh, probably in the 2008, 2010 range. Um, let's go ahead and get some, maybe even before that. Tray looks good. Uses four AA batteries. See if she powers on. Yep. Noisy just like that other cannon, and that's just standard. Hmm. This might have a bad sensor. So I just took powered it on, powers on fine, um, but Whenever you are in live view trying to take a picture, you get the black screen of death. So a lot of the times that's, I, I believe, generally a sensor issue. Um, and no matter what kind of picture you try to take with this, the pictures all turn out completely black. So unfortunately, I'll try to do a little more digging on this one because if it was in working condition, even with some of the cosmetic issues, it would, it would have a pretty decent value of 50 to $70, but as is, I'm not gonna assign any value and I'll try to see if there's anything I can do to get this into working condition, but it does not look promising. Alrighty. Ooh, look at this little guy. Fujifilm Finepix Z30. This is a very compact uh, little digicam. Came in a variety of colors like orange, pink, and green. And it does power on. Everything's good there. See hear that? Pretty common um, for older Fujifilm cameras. Definitely something you would want to make note in the listing if you were selling something like this, that the lens is noisy. Okay, yeah, this camera is, I would say, is in fair working condition. Um, and the value on this guy with a charger and a small memory card is gonna be about 40 bucks. All right, Nikon Coolpix L18 with potential lens error. So you see how the lens is actually jutting out just a little bit, not a good sign. Uh, the lens is either defective or it was put away like that. Battery compartment looks okay. This, this uh, era of Nikon Coolpix camera is pretty commonly known for battery door issues as well as lens errors. Yeah, that didn't sound good, did it? Look that. You got a lens error. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the parts section. Um, no value assigned there. It's what happens with cameras when they sit around for a long time or they haven't been used. Maybe they haven't been used for a reason. All right, Olympus FE210, seven megapixel, uh, AA powered camera, actually physically in very good condition. It's 
a nice, uh, nice example of this camera. And this camera also uses, I believe, XD card for memory. Um, and I'll go ahead and test that later. Uh, that is something you want to test. Very rarely there's an issue with the either SD or XD or compact flash memory card slot um, that could impact actual performance. So that's something that you would want to test if you were actually selling this camera. Um, but value on this guy is going to be kind of in that same ballpark, $35 range. All right, we've got five, we've got 10 cameras left. We're halfway through. Um, let's go ahead and grab this Canon here. Canon PowerShot SD600. This is a six megapixel camera that uses Canon's NB4L battery. I've sold a lot of these over the years as well. Ooh, power's on. This has a bit of cooties on it. We'll get that cleared off real quick. And looks pretty good now. So, ooh, this looks, this feels pretty nice, actually. A lot of the times you'll, you'll have some grading lens issues, you'll have dead displays, you'll have purple splotches on these LCDs, but uh, this actually looks quite good, which is a refreshing change of pace. The last uh, few SD600s I've seen have been inoperable, so to have one that appears to be working properly is uh, great. Ooh, yeah, it takes a picture, too. LCD does have some wear micro scratches common with storage in like a purse or carrying around in your pocket for kind of a longer period of time. That will affect the value a little bit. Um, but the value on this, if you pair it with a charger, USB cable, and a small memory card, you're looking at a value of about probably north of $65. And values of cameras change, uh, especially with the pandemic around 2020, 2021, you start to see a bit of a bubble and interest peaked with, uh, with portable pocket digital cameras. Um, so cameras that I was selling literally in 2018, 2019 for like five, 10, $15 were suddenly on the market for 50, 75, $150, which was pretty crazy. Again, model dependent. Uh, a lot of it is kind of hype and people with social media and YouTube making videos about them. Um, but, uh, it's just something that I have to pay attention to because this is my job is buying and selling cameras. Um, so everything's a bit of a roller coaster. Wee! Next camera. Ooh, Canon PowerShot Elf 115. This is the newest camera that we've seen yet. Or 8X, uh, 8X optical zoom, maybe like 16 megapixel camera. Uses Canon's NB11L battery. I think I've got one of those over here. Hopefully it's charged. I have a whole separate charging setup over there just to charge batteries. Um, that took a couple years to kind of get going. Ooh, lens looks great. That's nice. It looks, it looks to be in good shape. Hopefully everything is functioning properly. Lens moves in and out well. So one thing I look for whenever I'm taking pictures and doing product testing is any lens glass scratches as well as any spots that show up, especially as you zoom out. And that's normally like dust on the sensor and that can be very hard to fix. Um, the brand that I've seen that has the most issues with black spots is Panasonic. Like Panasonic is up here and then the other brands are down here. It's just very, very common with older Panasonic Lumix digital cameras. Nice. That's, uh, that's, that's good. So this camera's in good working condition. Get it cleaned up a little bit. Value on this camera has basically doubled in the last few years. This used to be a camera I would sell for 60, 70 bucks, and now the value on this is around 140. Um, so that is, that alone paid, paid for the entire box. So that's a great one. All right, let's pull out this guy. Ooh, Samsung. Did you know Samsung made cameras? Um, I actually have a entire YouTube video I'm making about the history of Samsung cameras and 
kind of their rise and downfall. Uh, for many, many years, from 2001 to 2008, 2009, they were kind of a subpar basic digital camera manufacturer with plastic body cameras. And then, then they started to do some interesting things with front-facing uh, front cameras and screens. And then they started making their NX series mirrorless cameras, which are actually pretty cool cameras. Um, and then they just stopped making cameras in 2015. So look for that in the next couple couple weeks. Hopefully, I'll be producing and making that video. Um, ooh, very noisy. I'm very surprised this actually turned on because the lens was stuck out. So this is one of those rare cameras where even though the lens is stuck out, the camera is actually still working, albeit noisily. So not much value on uh, on these guys. Um, I'm gonna put a value on this one of about 30 bucks. Um, it does have a little bit of rubber wear on the front that's a little bit sticky, tacky. Um, you can clean that up with a little bit of alcohol and there's a few other chemical compounds I use that can help to, uh, to make that a little more palatable. Um, but yeah, that's not bad. All right, we're down to six cameras left here. We've got a Kodak EasyShare C195, which is a 14 megapixel. Pretty widely produced camera. I've sold dozens of these over the years as well. Uh, I think it comes in black, blue, and white. Problem I saw immediately is we've got some LCD issues. You can see underneath, it's actually under the LCD, there appears to be delamination, uh, so I don't know about this one. Ooh, and there's a ton of brown stuff inside of the battery tray. It's kind of gross. I don't have high hopes. It does power on. Delete the pictures. Let's see if we can get a picture taken with this. Mm, yeah, that display. So you can kind of, you see what the display looks like. It is working. Um, but it's uh, not super pleasant to look at, that's for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the four parts section. Uh, it is functioning, but that will affect the value in a pretty big way. Um, if this was in good working condition, it'd have a value of about 35. All right. Ooh, got a couple Casios in here. Maybe we'll do those next. Uh, Casio. Casio also made cameras for uh, a period. Um, this guy uses a beefy, beefcake of a battery, MP130, giant battery. Maybe there's a little bit of juice left on this guy. The battery door is broken, that's why there was some tape on it, it looks like. Um, so I don't know how that's gonna work, but I'll hold it down and we'll see if this thing turns on. Oh, it does. But the lens cover doesn't fully open. So move that, there we go. Appears to be a little bit of dust inside the lens as well, as well as some micro scratches on the glass. Not smooth when I zoom out. It gets stuck. It gets stuck at about 5x and then about 8x. But this thing is going to require a fair amount of work and uh, I'll see if I can get it back into functioning condition, but I'm not going to assign a value on this for now. That's cool, the battery still works for however long that thing's been sitting there. That's kind of nuts. Another Casio, Casio EX-H10. Also uses a big battery. NP90. Get an idea, and when I say big, you get an idea of like the dwarf size of, of uh, these Casio batteries compared to these other ones. Kind of power hogs. This one's got, uh... oh, wow. This one also has a little bit of juice left in it. Ooh, lens looks good too. 
Nice. Wow. All right, I'm going to take a picture and see if it's got enough juice for... Nice. Well, that's cool. That was unexpected. Um... So overall, I would say it's in fair condition. It has some scuffs and some marks on it. Um, the value on this, as is with just the battery, no charger, card, cables, you're looking at about 40 bucks. Hmm. Three cameras left. What is going on here? Canon PowerShot A4000, which has gotten very popular over the last year or two. Um, this used to be a 50, 60, 70 dollar camera and now it's in great shape, 150 to 200 dollars. This one is not in great shape as you can see. So we've got some, it looks like the protector on the screen was left on there and melted. And that is going to require, require some work. So I have some stuff that really does a good job. It's kind of like Gooby Gone but works better with electronics at getting some of that sticky substance off. You still have to work at it. It's not a quick process, um, but maybe I'll be able to get that off. But most importantly, let's see if the camera works. There is a ding on the lens front, which can impact the lens performance. And sometimes you're able to, if it's not operable, you're able to work in a small, very, very small flathead type screwdriver and pop it up and bend it up a little bit kind of as a last resort. Um, no, camera doesn't power on. It does have a battery in it. Let's see, I'm gonna pull out an NB11L replacement. Cross my fingers. Ooh, does power on. Lens looks decent, just needs a bit of a cleaning. I did not expect this camera to actually power on. Let's see if the lens works. Ooh, LCD looks okay, actually, under all that crap. Yeah. Take a picture. Nice. Well, that is a unexpected delight. So this camera, uh, I'll get it all cleaned up. The ding on the front doesn't appear to actually affect the performance optically, uh, but that is something that does affect the value. Um, but assuming I'm able to get it all cleaned up and it continues to test well, uh, you'll kind of value probably around 100 bucks on this. So that's great. Two cameras left. We've got a Kodak Easy Share M893 purple camera. Uh, I think this was released probably in the 2006 2008 time frame. Uses the KLIC 7001 battery which is a very skinny, fairly inefficient battery that doesn't lead to great battery life. Doesn't power on. Get another battery. Okay, no power. That's a bummer. I actually just sold one of these. Um, this camera in good working condition is gonna be about 30 bucks. Unfortunately, this guy's not powering on, so no value here. And we are on to the last camera. Ladies and gentlemen, Canon PowerShot A570 Digicam, AA powered, not in great shape, but maybe it'll work. Change batteries. So whenever you put in uh, the AA batteries and it says change batteries immediately and you know they're charged and they're ready to go, normally that's your problem. That, that's your problem right there. You've got the AA batteries that aren't seating properly. So what you're going to have to do is similar to what I did before, bending the post a little bit. Um, and I can see that post is recessed quite a bit.
So I'll work on that one a little bit later. This is not in great shape. It's pretty beat up. And if it was working, value on it's probably in the $30 to $40 range, given its, uh, given its condition. In super condition, this would have a value of probably in the $60 to $70 range. Condition means a lot, just like anything in life. If you have something that's in mint condition, never been used, it's going to add a multiplier effect in terms of the value. So no value on this one. But overall, very successful. We've got we had 11 working cameras out of those 20 cameras. Value of about $600 on that $100 investment, um, even with almost half of the cameras broken. So overall, I would consider that a big win. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below. Uh, leave a like. Um, and I'll try to make some more videos like this. I do have some more cameras from that same store. Uh, and if you're interested in seeing another video around some additional cameras, uh, just let me know down below.